Okay. Here we have something that is a very familiar situation. We are using the rule. We are going to be used. Uh, this seems to be very, very complex, but it's not so simple. It's quite simple. Now here we have a raised to 1 by 8 plus a raised to minus 1 by 8, a raised to 1 by 8 minus a raised to. So we are going to use the rule, which is not necessarily to do only with indices that x plus y into x minus y is equal to x squared minus y squared. So we need to identify starting with say this. <coughs> now if you see this term and this term are added and the same two terms are subtracted. So it satisfies this particular condition. So if you look at these two brackets together, this would turn out to be x squared. That is a raised to 1 by 8, the whole square minus y square that is a raised to minus 1 by 8 the whole square the remaining things would remain as they are a raised to 1 by 4 plus a raised to minus 1 by 4 into a raised to half plus a raised to minus half now here what do we get this will become if you use power of power rules it becomes a raised to 1 by 8 into 2 which would become 1 by 4 minus 8 raised to minus 1 by 8 into 2 raised to minus 4 minus 1 by 4 into a raised to 1 by 4 plus a raised to minus 1 by 4 the last two brackets we just keep copying them and then use them further now this eventually is a raised to 1 by 4 minus a raised to minus 1 by 4 into a raised to 1 by 4 plus a raised to minus 1 by 4 and this is a raised to half plus a raised to minus half. Now here again we come back to situation x minus y into x plus y which again would be a raised to 1 by 4 the whole square minus a raised to minus 1 by 4 the whole square these two turn out to be this and this would remain as it is a raised to half plus a raised to minus half. Now this will now become a raised to 2 into 1 by 4 minus a raised to minus 1 by 4 into 2 which will turn out to be half into a raised to half plus a raised to minus half. Right. So this ultimately is a raised to half minus a raised to minus half a raised to half plus a raised to minus half. So we have a raised to half minus a raised to minus half into this. So this again we are going to use the same rule here that x minus y into x plus y is x square that is a raised to half the whole square minus b square minus a raised to minus half the whole square. This again would turn out to be a raised to half into 2 minus a raised to minus half into 2. That is the power of power rule which ultimately turns out to be a minus a raised to minus 1. Which turns out to be a minus 1 upon a. So we have a raised a minus 1 by a is our answer. So among these, this would be the right option. Let's check this. Yes, that is the right option. From here, let's take it to the next level. Let's see what we have in store for us. Okay. This is 1 upon 1 plus z raised to a minus. We had done a sum similar to this. But just as a reminder, the first step we could do, we could write this first one as z raised to a minus a. And this one would be z raised to a minus b plus z raised to a minus c and this would of course be 1 upon z raised to b minus b plus z raised to b minus c plus z raised to b minus a and the last expression would be 1 upon z raised to c. c repeats itself so we write that c minus c plus z raised to c minus b plus z raised to c minus b and if you see if you take z raised to b as common factor in this z raised to s common in this and ultimately we get the answer as 1. Terms get cancelled eventually it is turning out to be the final one would turn out to be z raised to minus a 
plus z raised to minus b plus z raised to minus c upon the same thing. So it's turning out to be 1. So we have done a problem similar to that. It's only that the names of variables have been changed. So it is the same thing. Let's move forward. Yes. So this again is a kind of a repetition which we have done earlier. It is we did the case of we multiply x, y, z and we multiply these and you end up getting something like this x, y, z is equal to x, y, z, x raised to uh, c, y raised to a and z raised to c. That means c is equal to 1, y is, a is equal to 1, c is equal to 1. So we have all these things as the same. So we have this, sorry, I'm sorry, this should be b, I suppose. So we have C, A, B. So C is also 1, A is 1, B is 1. Hence, A, B, C would be 1. We had done the same problem in one of the examples earlier. So the option here is 1. Okay. So now, the next one is this. That is 2 raised to n plus 2 raised to n minus 1. So we have 2 raised to n. The next 2 raised to n minus 1 can be written as 2 raised to n into 2 raised to minus 1 and here divided by 2 raised to n into 2 minus 2 raised to n. So this is what we have here. Now this if you see you can write it as 2 raised to n plus 2 raised to n into 2 raised to minus 1 is the same as into 1 by 2 raised to 1. Much the same way here we have 2 raised to n. We can take out common in this and you get 2 minus 1 inside. This is you have taken 2 raised to n common bracket 2 minus 1. And here too we can take out 2 raised to n common. So you have 2 raised to n common into 1 plus half divided by 2 raised to n into 1. So this is ultimately this gets cancelled. So we get 1 plus half which is going to be 1 and a half. That is 2 plus 1 by 2 which is 3 by 2. So basically here we are taking out 2 raised to n as a common factor. The other options you can take the LCM but ultimately you will have to take 2 raised to n as a common factor which gets cancelled. And ultimately you're getting 1 plus half as the option which is the same as 3 by 2. So our answer is going to be 3 by 2. Let's verify. Yes, we do have that as the option. Now further, let's move. And you have this. <clears throat> now here again, this is somewhat similar to sums earlier. But we need to prime factorize 360. It would be a nice way of doing prime factorization. If you see 360 can be written as 2 into 180 and 2 into 90 and you have 2 into 45 which can be written as 9 into 5. So ultimately 360 is going to be 1, 2, 3. It's 2 cube and 9 can be written as 3 square into 5 raised to 1. So 360 is 2 cube into 3 square into 5 raised to 1. 8 into 9 72 into 5 360. But it's also told that 360 is this. So the same 360 can be written as 2 raised to x into 3 raised to y into 5 raised to z is 2 cube into 3 square into 5 raised to 1. Now, this is a familiar situation when earlier we came across a case where it's x raised to a, y raised to b, z raised to c is x, y, z, and we took a as accordingly 1. So, much the same way here, since if you compare this with 2 raised to q, 2 q, so bases are equal, hence indices have to be equal, so x would be 3. Similarly, you have 3 raised to y is 3 raised to 2, bases are equal. Hence, indices will be equal, y is equal to 2, and the last one is this and this. So that means z is equal to 1. So our combination is going to be 3, 2, 1. x is 3, y is 2, and z is 1. So this would be our right option. Let's verify, and yes, that is what we have here. Furthermore, we have this. This is similar to the kind of sum we did about just two examples behind 2 raised to n. We need to find the value of x raised to x. Now here we have 2 raised to x. 
minus 2 raised to x into 2 raised to minus 1 is 4. Now here in the next step we can write the 4 as 2 squared because the whole equation is in terms of 2. Now here we can take out 2 raised to x common and you get 1 minus 2 raised to minus 1. This can be written as 2 squared and this can be written as 2x into 1 minus 1 by 2 which is 2 squared. This can be written as 2 raised to x into 1 minus half is 2 which is 2 squared. This can be written as 2 raised to x into 2 raised to minus 1 is equal to 2 squared. Hence that means this is 2 raised to x minus 1 is 2 squared. Again bases are equal. Hence indices would be same. So x minus 1 is 2. That is x is equal to 2 plus 1, 3. So x is 3. But what they have asked is what is x raised to x? x raised to x would be nothing but 3 cube which is 27. So among these answers what we have is 3, 27, 7, 9. So our answer is going to be 27. So x cube is going to be 27. Let's verify. Yes, and what we have is 27. Okay, now there is one thing you need to be extra careful. This is something which most candidates have a tendency to do. By the, by the time you finish solving the equation, you get the answer. So you think, oh, that's the answer, which is 3. And immediately you take, part, take mark this one. But remember, what they have asked is not the value of x, which normally they do. What they have asked is x raised to x. So you need to check the question, get into the habit of reading the question again. Once you get the answer, read the question once more. So our, what is required is not the value of x, but x raised to x. So that is 3 raised to 3, 27 and not 3. So we need to get a little alert in such cases. Let's move on further. Okay, this is also similar to the question we did earlier there was a question earlier about 2 raised to n so this for example is nothing but 3 raised to n into 3 plus 3 raised to n and this is 3 raised divided by 3 raised to n into 3 q minus 3 raised to n into 3 raised to 1 we have to split this up now in this we can take out 3 raised to n common in the numerator and you get 3 plus 1 divided by again here take we take 3 raised to n common and you get 3 q minus 3 raised to 1 which is 3. So now this is the same as 3 raised to n into 4 upon 3 raised to n into 27 minus 3. So this becomes 1 upon is equal to 4 upon 24 which is 1 upon 6. So we have 4 by 24 is 1 by 6. So it's similar to the question we had on 2 raised to n. We just take out the raise to n term common. So among these options, we have 1 by 6 as the option. And yes, we are right. Now, here we have something interesting. Uh, this is similar to that simple sum which we did earlier, but we can repeat this just to make our fundamentals clear. So we have something like 1 upon 1 plus a raised to y minus x plus 1 upon 1 plus a raised to x minus y. Now this can be written if you see y is turning up, you can write this 1 as a raised to 0, which can be written in this form a raised to y minus y plus a raised to y minus x. Similarly here you can write a this one as a raised to 0 which is x minus x plus a raised to x minus y. Now this if you remember we are using the rule a raised to a x raised to a plus b is x raised to a into x raised to b and this would be again a raised to y into a raised to minus x plus 1 upon a raised to x into a raised to minus x plus a raised to x into a raised to minus 1. Now here we can take out a raised to y as a common factor and you get a raised to minus y plus a raised to minus x. And here we have 
a raised to x as a common factor and we have a raised to minus x plus a raised to minus y. Now what do we do next? Now here this is the common factor that is 1 upon a raised to minus y as a common factor. I'm just drawing this line so that things don't get mixed up. So we can take it's remember it's not just a raised to minus y plus a raised to minus x is not the common factor. It's 1 upon a raised to minus y plus a raised to minus x is a common factor into in the first bracket you have a raised to y that is this one plus we take in this common 1 upon a raised to x and this again is 1 upon a raised to minus y plus a raised to minus x into 1 upon a raised to y can be written as a raised to minus y 1 upon a raised to x is a raised to minus x both these terms are identical they get cancelled and a solution is going to be 1. So among these the option is 1. Quite similar to that sum with three expressions like this but this is one thing that we can do is convert the 1 as a raised to 0. So yes, that's what we have, right? So we have done quite a lot of these problems, each one quite different from the other. And I'm sure you'll be working out these kind of problems again. And I'd be very happy if I have been able to clear your doubts. Thank you very much.